the last class, we learn about what is the difference between beam and column. Like beam, it don't matter, it is horizontal or it is vertical, but it carries the load, but perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the member. That is the definition of the. So, for example, uh, someone has too much background noise. See, this is the beam. If you have support in the both end, if load working uh, downward direction, that means direction of the load making 90 degrees, this axis. This one. So, this is called a beam. Then, what is the column? If we have a column like that. At the bottom. Load working. Well, one name. In the right side, column. That means load is compressive load parallel to the longitudinal axis. It making zero angle with the longitudinal axis of the member. So uh, that's the difference between beam and column. And in the exam, uh, sometimes we put short question that what is the difference between beam and column? Then what you learn? Then we learn about what is the free body diagram? What is the load part? What is the internal load? That we already explained it, right? Like this 10 Newton is external load on a cantilever beam. And this 10 Newton, you can, you can see from outside. But all the reaction force, okay. So uh, those are the reaction, and this is the external load. And you see right over here, ten uh, newton load. Reaction will be also ten newton. And the reaction is working upward, right? And ten newton load working downward. So there will be a turning moment. That turning moment to protect the turning, you need to put a bending moment over here. So what you see, you applied only one load, but it generates two load in the in the support. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Shall I keep the mute quality and ballo it? I'm sorry. Shall I keep the mute quality and ballo it? All the participants. Oh, all okay i think right now everyone is uh, mute now okay uh, now i tell you something that you have a member for example in your roof you have a roof you dry your cloth in a wire right what kind of shape of the wire round shape and is attached at the two end of the wire, say in the left side wall, it is attached right over here, then it is attached uh, right over here. Right? So, uh, when you hang a cloth, your uh, coat, your jacket, you hanging throughout the wire, say you're hanging over here. So, your coat has a certain weight, even 200 gram, 300 gram, you have certain weight, right? And due to the weight, you will see that your wire will bend like that. Now, you have a reaction force working right over here, right? Your reaction force working upward, right over here, and right over here. So, if I take the reaction force, this one, and this one. This is this to my reaction, and this is external load. So due to the weight, your wire get bent. Why? Why it is get bending? How you can explain by your uh, free body diagram? We can explain it. Okay. How? In if I start with the left side. Okay. Say I I am cutting this beam right over here and i like to make a, a free body diagram on the both sides 
what is the both side let me take the only right side okay right side what force i have uh, upward force i have upward force right over here how much that force what is the value you know r1 or r2 what is the value and then draw you right side one so i making draw right side one and right side we have a reaction force right over here and you make the this one okay now what you see in internal say this beam or this wire is made of uh, some aluminium some time alloy material right so we can hang the cloth but if it is very brittle then what will happen you put it your cloth ultimately it become two part if it is very brittle brittle mean uh, it don't have any resistance to carry the load but when it is made of steel wire or aluminum wire you can hang it because it has more resistance so what i'm saying uh, right over here load working upward how we can balance this portion this portion you like to make it balance how we can balance it this is working upward so same amount of force should work downward right i'm saying same one force working downward if this one 10 this one has to be 10 now what did you see this uh, portion is rotating right this one pushing up this one pushing down is rotating right so you have to put a, a reaction moment it will be like this one so this is moment so what is the value of this moment this force into this distance distance between these two force because two force is opposite and equal that's why you will have a, a bending okay and if you look right over here this force working upward right so reaction force right over here uh, other thing uh, you have a i have to take only some portion not the whole portion Say for example, my force is original force is right over here. What I'm saying, external force, this force I can draw it, right? This force I am keeping over here. Now you make the free body. Then how you can make the free body? This force working downward, right? So I need to add a force. Add a force upward, and this one rotating anti-clockwise. So they are you need to put one more bending moment clockwise. Then what happens? This moment and this moment will be cancel out, and this one, this force and this force will be cancel out. So ultimately there is no force. Now what did you see actually? in every segment there is a two force working number one bending moment other one vertical force this vertical force is what kind of force is normal force or shear load anyone this vertical load yeah it is shear load because all this force working uh, parallel to the cross section like this one working parallel to the cross section this one working parallel to the cross section so those are shear force due to this shear force your beam might become two part and due to this bending right over bending this bending beam it is bent so this bending uh, it could be either upward or it could be either downward so for example if we on side i like to put the speaker view okay uh, you see pen in my hand right how we can bend it you can bend it like this way or you can bend it this way so there a member can bend upward or downward so that is called bending moment you see this m right over here is called bending moment so this bending moment we have two sign one is negative other one is positive 
So we need to know that who is, who is bending moment is positive and who is bending moment is negative. That we need to know. So how we can figure out? We are saying M, sometimes this M is called positive. Also, sometimes we call M is negative. So when is negative? If it is bent downward, then it is uh, positive. Like you look in the right over here, this bending is positive bending, this one. But if it is bent like that, then this bending is called negative bending. And how you will remember it? You see, if you put some water over here, or marble, or this little ball you put over here, it remains at the same position. So that's why you put some water, drop of water, or put a little ball, it will remain over here. So this bending is called positive bending. And this one, you keep a little ball over here, it will fall down. So this bending is called negative bending. Okay. Then shear load. Which one is positive? Which one is negative? Okay. Uh, after 10 minutes, I need to reschedule it again. Okay. So you see, right over here, what is positive shear? If shear force working upward, a force working upward, with respect to right hand side, then it's, it is called positive shear. This shear force is called positive shear. And if a force working downward with respect to right side, then it is called negative shear. So with respect to right side, if shear force working upward, then it is positive shear. If shear force working downward, then it is negative shear. So two things you need to remember. Bending moment and the shear force. Bending moment, if it's bending upward like a boat, then it is positive. Upside boat, then it is negative. Shear force working upward with respect to right side, then it is positive. Working downward with respect to right side, then it is negative. Then, other thing we need to know, what is the free body? diagram of the of the beam how you get three body diagram for example you have a beam from here to here this beam and you put some load say for example you put some weight over here so weight has a center of gravity so it will work through this point so if you have support at the two end, then how much will we say you have support over here? You have support over, uh, over here. Now, what will be the uh, reaction at that uh, support? So your reaction will be upward, reaction will be upward, right? And this reaction force, this is the action force. So if this one, I can say R1, I can say R1, this one. And this one, I can say R2. How we can figure out the value of R1 and R2? If you know the length, say this one five, this one three, it will eight. You know that the length of the beam, and you know this amount already you know. For example, you know uh, this one, is 350 Newton force. You can easily figure out the value of R1 and R2. Two unknown, so you need two equations. And number one equation, you can say summation of force along y direction. Summation of force, Fy, equal to zero. Then what you will get? You will get R1 plus R2, you get this one, minus this 350, 350 equal to zero. This is your one equation. Now you need another equation, right? So this distance, for example, I'm saying distance between R1 and 350 is A. I'm saying this distance, not able to write in a second. Say so this distance is A and distance from this side to this side, this is B. Then how will, what will be the another equation? You can take a moment at any point, 
you can take moment right over here or you can take moment over here so if you take one more moment for example you are taking moment this one then you have one more equation right if you say summation of moment sum of moment m o m e n t moment equal to 0 and that moment you can say uh, i'm saying 0 moment equal to 0 now you need to mention which way is positive which way is negative so you say clockwise moment is positive then what will you get you take a moment of here so 350 into a that means this is rotating clockwise so i'm saying this is positive so 350 multiply by a distance a and r1 moving upward so it will be anti clockwise then it's a minus uh, r1 multiply by distance what is the distance a plus b a plus b a plus b equal to zero and by solving this if you know the value of a b you can easily figure out the r1 and r2 from this uh, two equation then you put over here r1 this mass r2 1 2 equal to this mass so this whole picture right over here is called free body diagram so you need to have the free body diagram so when you have a beam at first you need to figure out the reaction what is the reaction force you figure out the amount of reaction force then you have further calculation and i'll tell you what are the uh, further calculation in that case so before that at first we we'll look that right over here i just show some example of determinate and indeterminate structure that i already explained it to you before that we have number of equation three six if you have more unknown than number of equation then this structure is called indeterminate structure like this is a 2d body right you have x axis along this direction y axis along this direction right over here you have two four two reaction and also you have one bending so total you have three right over here similarly right side you have three total six unknown but in uh, 2d you have only three unknown if this is xy plane you have summation of x equal to zero summation of y equal to zero summation of bending moment along z equal to zero that you have already. okay so this is the uh, determinate and indeterminate structure other example i give you for the bridge you have 100 of pillar so you have 100 reaction but you cannot solve it by your equation so those structure is called indeterminate structure so we are not talking about right now we are talking about the beam so you need to know this is the notation what all the notation we will use when studying the beam and while studying the solid mechanics so you just did one time i'm not uh, going to explain it because it's very easy and simple uh, right over here is a stress in a beam that will explain it later one uh, example of beam example of beam like you see river bridge you have pillar in the two end and car passing through the bridge so this is also beam in your house you have column at the two end but the horizontal you have horizontal beam what, what is carrying it carrying the load uh, from the wall top floor say this is the beam of a, a bottom floor and you have reaction right over here you have reaction right over here right and all the weight of top floor is working right over here right over here working downward working down okay so you see this is the beam because it is carrying now uh, we need to know about the beam we are studying beam but we need to know that there is how many type of beam is there that is called classification of the beam so let's see what are the classification of the beam uh, these are, are the support of the beam i think you already know from your engineering mechanics the figure a showing over here in the left side uh, that one is called a uh, fixed support see this one is called fixed support it has the two reaction and one bending moment this one is called roller bearing and this one is called pin so what is the difference between roller and bearing and pin 
because in the roller your restriction is only uh, one direction that is for example uh, this is a beam so let's say my finger is roller i'm putting like that okay if my finger is roller this finger or i'm keeping this one what does it mean i can slide right that means horizontal direction there is no reaction because my finger cannot protect horizontal motion but my finger able to protect upward and downward motion because it is on roller it is on roller only downward motion upward motion if you apply force say uh, the this is my finger on the roller somebody push upward then it will go like that right but downward direction it will be stable so you are putting a roller on the bottom side that means it have restriction in the downward direction so that's why it has a in the figure b it has only one reaction in the upward because in the horizontal direction direction it don't have uh, it free to move so there will be no reaction and the right figure in the pin support what does it mean say i am holding like that this beam end. so i am not allowing to move i am pulling but it is not moving that mean i am restricting movement along s direction then upward direction i am it is also not moving so also in upward direction so that mean it has two capability movement along horizontal and movement along vertical direction but it can rotate it will not allow you to move assalam alaikum sir sir waiting is now quite a friend wait for sir uh, okay okay but it is rotated that's why it not able to carry any uh, bending okay but if i hold it tight like like that then it will not move i am pulling not moving if somebody push upward it will not move or some try to twist it will not twist that one is figure a so we have three type of support and uh, if you have support you need fix support three reaction roller one reaction and pin support two reaction so the beam roller pin and fixed then type of the beam uh, number one simply support this beam is simply supported because it support only it has support only two end and a and b uh, this beam is overhanging beam overhanging beam is this one is called overhanging beam. and this one is called cantilever beam voice cantilever beam because it has only one end support like your balcony in your house in your building like you have a house and in that house you have a uh, balcony right if i pick up the blue color say you have balcony so in that balcony you walk down you staying all right over here then what happened you are your load your weight walking down or right over here and right over here your reaction then your reaction will be upward okay so this beam is called cantilever beam other thing this one is called continuous beam because you have multiple support more than two support I, for example, the river breeze, the one breeze or part the breeze, you might have one more support over here. That is called continuous beam. And this one is overhanging beam. What is the difference between overhanging beam and cantilever beam? You see, overhanging beam it has a portion of simple supported beam. Then also it has a portion of cantilever beam. So this one is called overhanging beam. previous slide this classification based on the uh, type of support and how many support is based on this classification of the beam but right over here type of beam only in terms of load uh, there is called there is beam two yes what is this one is called concentrated load uh, right over here uh, this beam is called concentrated load why so load working in a fixed point a p1 so that's why this is called concentrated load and uniform load right over here uniformly distributed load because is load working throughout the and this one will only varying load because at the right over here load is right over here load is zero 
but it gradually move load is increase so this one is called uniformly uh, varying load and right in the right side it apply a bending bending moment at the middle of the beam so this is classification based on the type of the load and shear force i already explained it if working upward with respect to right right side then it is called positive shear the for example is showing on the picture this one moving up because shear force working upward right here working downward if a beam section move upward then it is positive shear if a beam section moving downward then it is negative shear that just you need to remember and when we solve the problem then it will be a more clear uh, bending moment this is positive and this is negative and what is actually bending moment bending moment mean algebraic summation of all the moment in a particular section for example you have a beam long beam support at the two end so i am saying your support you have right over here support right over here so if you make a line make a line okay <clears throat> now you have load in multiple point right over here you have a load let me pick up the arrow you have load over here you have load over here sometime you might load have from the downward from the bottom okay now what is the, how will figure out the bending moment at right this point <clears throat> you have to take summation of moment all the force either from left side either from right side for example if i say this is point b point b what will the moment at point b so what will do you take the uh, moment summation of moment of all the force either left or right side of the beam so summation of moment your so these two force right if you take in the right side you will have three force but this force if exactly at point b then this moment for this force will be zero and if you consider the left side then how many force you have then you have a force this one you have force right over here you have force right over here you have force right over here you take moment for this one is rotating clockwise so you can think this is positive any direction you can think positive but this one rotating anti clockwise so this one will be negative how much will be bending moment for this force your uh, bending moment amount of force into this distance distance from b and for this one this force multiply by this distance and this force from here to this distance for this force amount of force into this distance that will be your bending summation of bending moment at point b just i just give you a idea that how we can figure out the bending moment it say defined as the algebraic sum of the moment of the forces to the right or left side of the cross section of the beam uh, end reaction that i have told you you need to figure out the end reaction now other two things you need to know you need to know what is shear diagram and what is the bending moment diagram these two things one things is the shear diagram other one is bending moment diagram what is this that you need to know so let's me explain it one thing you need to know shear force diagram s a d other thing you need to know bending sir our class time has finished okay hold on uh, last one minute bending moment diagram uh, let me finish that this slide this is bending moment diagram what happened bending moment diagram sometime it is called bmd bmd okay so what is bending moment diagram and what is shear diagram Di what is mean diagram diagram mean it is graph so shear force mean it is a graph 
that will show distribution of shear force along length of the beam. Distribution of shear force along length of the beam. For example, you have a beam, this is x-axis, this is y-axis. So you have a diagram, just one second, I know you are out of time. So you have shared diagram like that. So what does it mean? Point length zero, shear force zero. You are length this mass, shear force is this mass. And say your length is eight feet right over here. How much the shear force? Right over here. So just remember shear force diagram, it represents amount of shear force along length of the beam. And bending moment diagram, it represents bending moment along length of the beam. So right over here, the two definitions. You just need on time shear force and bending moment moment of the beam are very along the length of the beam, depending on the type of the load. That means shear force along the beam is not constant. Bending moment also is not constant. So you need to know where is the bending moment maximum and shear force maximum. So that's why you need to draw a diagram. That diagram is called, one is called shear force diagram, other one is called bending moment diagram. 